Lenny Wilkins was the quintessential floor general, but he was so much more. He was a player coach for two franchises during his career and then continued to build his legend on the sidelines. Lenny is one of only five people to be enshrined in Springfield as both a player and a coach. The spotlight really belonged to Lenny Wilkins, the smallest man in the game at 6'1". And at 33, playing in his eighth All-Star game, he showed he still has all the fluid moves that have made him such a standout in the NBA. Lenny Wilkins, out of boys high, very smooth, smooth player. I remember him playing against Coos, and he had stolen the ball from Coos off the dribble once, you know, and went all the way to the basket. And Coos, of course, was truly insulted because that's the one thing he never did was lose the ball. Wilkins was very quick and deceptively so. He was very similar, in my judgment, to Clyde Frazier. And of course, he had to be very efficient with his left hand and soft shot. And he had a little soft hook shot going to the basket. And I remember Russell disliking the fact that when he got past Casey Jones or whoever was guarding him, he would come in with that left hand hook shot and would sort of loft that ball extraordinarily high in the air off the glass. And Russell would have a trouble trying to lock it. He was just a smooth, nice player. They say Lenny Wilkins is always grim and determined and never smile. Well, they can't take that smile away from him tonight. That man, Lenny Wilkins, is on the payoff end again. You knew Lenny, as a left-hander, was going to go left. And so you always tried to overshadow him to make him go right. But he was so damn good going left, he still got around you. The player coach from Seattle was the biggest man on the court tonight. Now, he was not a scoring guard, per se. He was more of the traditional point guard, where he set things up, because he had a lot of good big men around him. He had Zelmo Beatty, Bill Bridges, Lou Hudson, all of those guys who could score. And I think Lenny made sure that his job was to get them the ball where they wanted the ball. And so he was a consummate point guard even back then. Well, Lenny came to us in 1960 with the Hawks. It was Cliff Hagen and Clyde Lavelle that was on our team at that time. Lenny came into a tough situation because everybody said if you were a guard, you didn't have much of a chance because those three guys were hogging the ball. Well, he came there and, and he was a, you know, did a terrific job. Very good defensive player. And I remember he'd always steal three or four balls a game. Take, you know, you put the ball down anywhere close to it and he could pick it up. I was very impressed with uh, Lenny. He came with us. He was a very religious man. I was extremely impressed with the fact that he was that devout a person. And uh, I admired that very much. He made an incredible impact on our team in St. Louis. He won a lot of close games for us, the tough games, and very good ball handler. He was a good passer and a good score. He had everything going for him. And he also was a very good coach after he retired. I know he coached for a number of years, but I had a great respect for Lenny, not only as a, as a basketball player, but as a person. He was a fine gentleman and he deserves everything that he's been able to get out of basketball. He's given back that much more to basketball. I saw one guy who went to Oz, ended up at Providence, played for Cleveland and a couple other teams. I'm saying, that's who I want to be like. Left-handed, okay, he could run the team and stuff like that. The ball, if we don't have a break right away, get it up and get the ball deep tomorrow. Okay, unless you got this ball. And every time I see Lenny Wilkins, I said, you're my idol. Because nobody has done what you've done. He's in the Basketball Hall of Fame, I don't know how many times. Okay, player, coach, Olympic teams, and stuff like that. But uh, ultimate gentleman, there's certain people that you idolize that you want to be like. The game is over for us, okay? But with him and just his demeanor and just his the way he carries himself, that's who I want to be like. I always tell him that. Well, most of you out there will remember Lenny Wilkins as one of the great and prolific coaches in NBA history. What about Lenny as a player made him so special? Well, first of all, you know, there's the story about Lenny's coaching the All-Stars one year and Shaquille O'Neal sort of looking at him, you know, listening to Lenny explain a play and Shaq goes home, talks to his father, comes back the next day, he looks at Lenny, he says, coach, you played? 
Yeah, he played, we're talking about a nine-time All-Star, a guy who finished second in the MVP voting one year to Wilt Chamberlain. Yeah, he played. Um, the one thing about Lenny is that he was very crafty, left-hander. He could always go to his left, and no one could stop him. They knew he was coming left, and still, no defense for him. He was also a player coach as he transitioned into that role at a time when that was still a thing in the NBA. Well, later in his career, you know, what a transition for him especially. Goes to the Seattle Supersonics and they say, hey, Lenny, by the way, do you want to coach us? He says, yes. Player, coach. He was a coach on the floor and a coach on the bench. And one of the winningest coaches in NBA history as well. Plenty of stories about Lenny Wilkins. One of my idols early on. Could only go left. Everybody knew it, and you couldn't stop him. <laughs> That's how good he was. And you knew he was a coach on the floor, and he became one of the first player coaches in the NBA because of that. You know, we function as a team, so we, we lose as a team, and we also win as a team. Oh, it was apparent to me way back then because as he was a co consummate quarterback, he knew what plays, what options to call. He probed your weakness and then he would attack it. He was a very heady player, and I had no doubts about it that he would be a great coach, and it turned out that he was a great coach. Light it up, Lenny. You are the winningest coach in the NBA.